What is up everybody, Golden Yogi here, and you are tuning into the channel with The Golden Perspective. Today, it's that time again. I know it's been two weeks missing while I was off at Burning Man, integrating this amazing new vibrations into my being. I hope that they come across in how I read this to you today. Before we get started, I want to invite you to subscribe down below if you have not already. While you're down there, turn on the post notifications so you know when the next video comes up. And also, leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. I really want to know, honestly. And uh, follow me down in the description of all my other socials, and let's get together. All right, without further ado, a rally off the bear market lows. This is week 37, 2022. After the market rejected a rally to 24,500, Bitcoin prices have dropped to 18,500, setting the second lowest low of the bear cycle. This has plunged over 11.8% of the supply back into an unrealized loss, allowing us to survey the risk of downside and the possibility of bottom formation. Bitcoin markets have experienced a powerful rally bouncing off the second lowest low of 18,649 of the prevailing bear market. Prices peaked at 21,758, but remain firmly within consolidation range, which has now been established for more than three months. Since mid-August, the market has been trading down from the consolidation range uh, high, which peaked around 24,500 as the market reaches towards the range uh, low this week. <clears throat> We have seen an opportunity to observe the volume of coins that flipped from an unrealized profit at 24,500 to an unrealized loss through this process. These moments provide valuable insight into onto the degree of coin accumulation and cost basis concentration within an established consolidation range. In this edition, we will zoom in on the concept of on-chain cost basis and changing coin profitability. We will also analyze a very rare event where three around 5,000 BTC whales sized transactions aged seven years to 10 years were spent over recent weeks. These coins were accumulated back in December of 2013, realizing over 163 million in profit. Discounts across the board. Bitcoin has now been within a persistent market downtrend for 10 months since the all-time high in November of 2021. This week, Bitcoin spot prices touched the 18,649 level, marking the second lowest low, uh, low, local low at a 72.5% uh, drawdown from the cycle top. Compared to previous uh, bear cycle cyclical bottoms, the 2022 contraction has not been as significant on a percent drawdown perspective. The lows in 2015 and 2018 and 2020 reached over 77% drawdowns from their all-time high. However, even with a lower drawdown magnitude of scale of financial loss in this bear market can be reasonably argued that the largest in history. In this edition, we will assess the current market structure using a framework of weighing spot prices against the cost bases of distinct cohorts of market participants. First off, we got the overall market, the MVRV, which measures the ratio of spot price and the on-chain cost basis of all investors in the market. Then there's the long-term holders, calculates the MVRV considering only long-term holders owning coins older than 150, 155 days on average and statistically the least likely to spend. Then we got the short-term holders MVRV, which calculates only those short-term holders owning coins younger than 155 days on average and statistically the most likely to spend. Historically, bottoming formation coincides with the spot price trading below all three of the aforementioned cost basis. This indicates a point in time where all cohorts are in aggregate holding an unrealized loss. The current bear market has spent 56 days in this condition, despite a brief bounce back above the real price, realized price and long-term holder variant. Compared to the typical duration of around 190 days below the realized price in previous bear markets, 56 days remains a relatively short period of time. In line with our June report, the lowest short-term holder MVRV values recorded in this cycle are lower than during the December 2018 capitulation, suggesting that short-term holders, in particular, have experienced a historically large degree of financial pain. Next, we can compare the average acquisition price per coin for the short-term holder cohort against the long-term holder average acquisition price to compare financial stress levels throughout the bear market. 
Persistent price depreciation leads to the short-term holder realized price to fall below the long-term holder realized price. Such events only occur during the late stages of a bear market and denotes periods where the average cost of acquisition over the past 155 days is now more advantageous than the average long-term holder cost basis. This is synonymous with capitulation, where coins purchased near the cycle top are sold and changed hands at much lower prices. Despite a 10-month downtrend, this bear market has not yet reached this, over, this crossover stage. Previous bears took between 145 days to 339 days to recover after such a crossover. By given the trajectory of these two realized price traces, we can expect a crossover by mid-September. You can see here in this crossover, this is these lines that they're talking about. And the highlighted area in purple is the time it crossed under and then crossed back over. The market recently rejected the rally above 24,500, giving us an opportunity to observe the volume of coins that have fallen from profit back into an unrealized loss. The core concept here is sharp price moves off of the highs or lows of a consolidation range can be exceptionally rich in analysis value. These events highlight the volume of coins which swap between holding an unrealized profit to an unrealized lice, loss or vice versa. Metrics like percent supply and profit can therefore be used to measure the volume of coins which change hands within that concentrated price range. Since mid-August, the total percent supply in loss jumped by 11.8%, reaching 48.1% as shown in the figure below. The contribution of short-term holders, 9.3%, is significantly higher than long-term holders at 2.5%. This difference highlights a rising momentum of capital inflows into the period since spot prices crashed below the realized price in early June. In other words, this high con concentration of short-term holder coins between 24,000 and 18,500 shows that 9.3% of the coin supply has, reached, has recently transacted, suggesting that both capitulation and an equivalent demand inflow within this price range it also highlights a risk in that a large volume of investor coins, 48.1% of the supply, are underwater below 18.5% and 11.8% of the supply has a cost basis between 18.5% and 24.5%. Next, we'll explore the realized prof loss ratio metric. This measures the ratio between the volume of coins moved in profit to those coins that are transferred in loss. Tracking the monthly average of this metric enables analysts to gauge shifts in the market momentum and sentiment and to characterize the dominant profile of coins which are on the move. At the early stages of the bull market, where new demand is strong enough to absorb the selling pressure and profits are taken at scale, this metric has historically recorded a sharp crossover at the 1.0 level in early bull phases. The loss dominant regime, less than one, during the extended phase of bear markets where supply is not met with sufficient demand until the ultimate capitulation takes place, this indicator typically collapses and remains below 1.0 midway through a bear market, but is usually before capitulation, providing an early warning signal. The interval between dropping below and reclaiming the 1.0 level is where bearish sentiment is at its peak, and due to an inadequate demand liquidity, from a qualitative standpoint, the current low liquidity regime began approximately four months ago and can be compared to the six month period experienced in the 2018-19 bear market. An interesting observation is the upward trend in which initiated in early June and peaked in mid-August having since descended to 0.58%. This pattern reconfirms that an uptick in profit taking took place by investors during that relief rally. Bear market volatility. The picture portrayed so far highlights the significant role of short-term holders' behavior in recent price moves. Therefore, as a key cohort of interest, assessment of short-term holder spending is paramount for identifying a resilient bottom formation. A core tool to examine short-term holders' profitability is the short-term holder SOPR, indicating the average profit multiple on spent coins. The short-term holder SOPR structure provides a strong compass for mapping different bear market stages. A, the post all-time high phase, 
The heavy loss realization after the all-time high bubble burst manifests an abrupt plunge to levels below one, usually following, followed by a volatile market regime. Next, the bear market rallies. As the bear market progresses, a fragile equilibrium forms as a byproduct of weak demand and new supply as holders seek exit liquidity. This stage is set for numerous bear market rallies peaking at various profit and loss levels, but ultimately failing to sustain breaks higher. Then there's the post capitulation. As the time component of the bear market starts to exhaust investors psychologically, the potential of a capitulation event rises accordingly. Following this washout, a period of recovering profitability and SOPR uptrend often follows. The June 2022 sell-off has many similarities to Phase C, and the recent $24,000 rejection showed a convincing underside retest of the short-term holder SOPR equaling 1.0. Showing investors sold at their cost basis, underside rejections like this are typical of bear market formation patterns. And we can see here, they're showing in red circles these uh, bear market. So like this is the, uh, the point where the, so in each one of these stages, A, B, or C, all-time high phase, the bear market rallies or post capitulation. And we're seeing that that point in June looks like that C phase. Very interesting. Let me know what you think. Moving on. Using the short-term supply profit loss ratio metric to assess the behavior of short-term holders during the transition from a bear to a bull market. This indicator measures the ratio of short-term holders unspent coins in profit to those in loss. A similar idea to SOPR, however, is using unspent held coins rather than spent coins. We can identify extremes in short-term holder market conditions. First off, we have the short-term uh, holder supply profit ratio greater than one, which is during bull markets, more than half of the short-term holder supply stays in profit, leading this ratio to fluctuate above one. Higher values indicate a larger incentive for profit taking. Then we have the short-term holder supply loss ratio less than one, which throughout bear markets, this ratio trades below one since the short-term holder supply is primarily in loss. Lower values indicate a larger probability of capitulation and where capitulation has taken place preceding a strong recovery upwards. Utilizing the 1.0 level as a reference point, we can anticipate potential pivot points for counter trend events, such as bull market corrections or bear market rallies. The recent rejection by the $24,000 level was an example of a possible turning point for the bear market rally, which failed to gain momentum. However, note the ascending lows of late, which is similar in structure to short-term holder SOPR, suggesting a slow but observable recovery could be underway. Old whales coming back to life. Bitcoin bear markets have the ability to flush out even the most steadfast investors. This regime of low profitability for long-term holders can be observed via the long-term holder SOPR. Historically, a sharp break back above one has signaled the transition back to bullish momentum in the market. Compared to 11 months of low profitability in the 2018-19 bear market, the current market has long-term holder SOPR trading below one for just four months. Occasionally, we can observe an abrupt spike higher in the long-term holder SOPR. This sudden spikes are usually attributed to the transfer of a large volume of older coins, which realize historically large profits. Generally, decoding these events requires detailed investigation via detailed blockchain data science. In the next section, we will detail an analysis associated with the recent expenditure of three UXTOs, which contained over 5,000 BTC each, were all acquired in December of 2013 when Bitcoin prices were $543. First, to underline the significance of this recent bounce in long-term holder SOPR, we can refer to the following chart presenting the daily spent volume of seven to 10 years old coins. Remarkably, there are only 11 instances in history where the daily volume of seven, to 10, seven year to 10 year old coins crossed over 4,000 BTC per day with three of them in the last two weeks. The highlighted transactions can be characterized as follows. First off, we have block number at block 751518. 
of August 28th, 2022. I guess the price was about 19,600 and spending 5,000 BTC, 1,500 BTC to an unknown receiver and 3,500 BTC to Kraken. Original purchase date was December 19th, 2013 at $543.14. Next one at block 751723, August 29th, 2022. The price was 20,200, spending 5,000 BTC, split to 170 addresses in one transaction. Original purchase date, also December 19th, 2020, uh, 29th, sorry. December 19th, 2013, at the same $543.14. Next, at block 752637, on September 4th, 2022, the price at that time was 19,900, spending 5,000 BTC at the immediate receiver of the transaction is Kraken, original purchase date, same day of December 19th, 2013, at $543.14. Therefore, the sudden peak in the long-term holder SOPR above was most likely attributed to these three old large wallets that realized a massive volume of profit by moving their funds acquired in late 2013. The following chart shows the two of these transactions which deposited funds in the Kraken realizing a total of $163,480,000 in profit. Wow. On the 8.5 uh BTC sent directly to Kraken. What happened with the other 1.5K? Who knows? Maybe personal exchange or new wallet. In conclusion, with Bitcoin trading 72.5% below the November 2021 all-time high this week, the market has many similarities to the latest phase of the 2018-19 bear market. The recent bear market rally sold off from 24,500 down to below 18,500 plunging a significant volume of short-term holder supply back into the unrealized loss. All in all, the primary factors influencing the current market structure appear to be these short-term holders, whom are jostling for the best entry price and what little profit is available to take. The sensitivity and conviction of these investors within the volatile macroeconomic uh, environment is a key factor in near-term market direction. Long-term holders have experienced a significant washout already and generally shift towards keeping coins dormant during these phases. The recent bear market rally failed to achieve escape velocity as shown by the rejections across numerous SOPR and investor profitability ratios. Inflows of demand have proven insufficient to date to absorb this sell side pressure. The battle is now in defense of the $20,000 range noting that bear market history often takes several months before the final touches on a bear market floor are established. Let me know what you think about all this. I still stand that we formed a bottom and we're settling, stating what is the strength of this bottom. Let me know in the comments. I'm really interested. Uh, if you have any information of why you disagree with me, please, uh, give me points of, of reference. I'm happy to look at it all. Thank you so much. I love you all. Take care and stay safe out there. Peace.